Hi, I'm Matt ward -Ages. I'm a science journalist for CosmosMagazine.com and I am here at the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge, which is a biennial event, which means it's held every two years, where teams from all around the world build solar cars and drive them from Darwin at the top of Australia to Adelaide down in South Australia. It's 3,020 kilometres and that's all running on the power of the sun. Now we're here today to ask some of your questions of the teams that are behind me here in the pit garage at Victoria Square or Tartanyanga in Adelaide's central business district. We're going to find out how they build these cars and what sort of knowledge they need to be able to do that. Let's go and find out. Hi, my name is Will Jones. I'm the race manager for the University of Michigan Solar Car team. But I'm here today to answer your questions about our solar car. How do solar cars work? So solar cars are kind of a combination of an electric go-kart um, and a residential solar system. So how they sort of function is first you have the solar array, of course that collects uh, the sunshine, and then from there it goes into a device that manages that power and it charges our battery or it goes directly to the motor. And then from the battery, uh, the power flows into our motor controller and then into the motor. Hi, I'm Matt Jennings. I'm a lecturer in mechanical design at Deakin University in the School of Engineering, but I'm also the team manager of Ascend, the uh, Deakin University Axiona solar car team that competed in the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge in 2023. Solar cars work a lot like electric cars, but they get extra energy from the solar cells that are on, uh, like this car, on the bonnet, the roof and the rear deck. Our solar car has electric motors that has lots and lots of wires coiled in a circle and that produces a magnetic field and the magnets then drive the wheels around and round and round. So our car has a big 60 kilowatt hour battery in it, but we also all the way along the journey from Darwin to Adelaide, we got as much sun as possible with these solar cells to add energy so we could go even further. So these solar cells are very different to the solar panels on your house, but are also quite similar in a few ways as well. These ones, normally the solar panels on your house come in a big square and there's lots of these individual cells on them. But we were able to get the cells by themselves and then make any pattern we wanted that matched the layout of our car. But they're also hyper, hyper efficient and they're flexible. So we can put them around these curves, which you don't really need on your house because they're typically flat roofs. But as we learn more about solar cells and solar technology, we'll be able to get these on much more cooler shapes and sizes and houses to make much nicer buildings that maybe don't get affected by wind as much. And then we can curve these around them and harvest solar in many, many, many more locations than we do today. Hi, uh, my name is Joel Roberts. I am the team captain and director of engineering for the University of Minnesota Solar Vehicle Project, a team representing the United States and the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge this year. What are the key differences between the solar cars and the challenge and the vehicle my family owns? So, these are electric vehicles. You can buy electric vehicles. However, these are a little bit different. Ours are designed to be incredibly lightweight. So I think probably two or three of these weighs about as much as a Tesla. Maybe not quite that. I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but it's very, very lightweight. Our car is built mostly from carbon fiber as well as aluminium. Aluminium is kind of our metal of choice because it has the highest strength to weight ratio, even higher than steel. So almost all the metal parts in the car are aluminium as well as carbon composite are used very heavily and that's helps make our car super lightweight. The other thing that the cars have that's very different is aerodynamics. So if you look at our car, if you look at all the other cars here, they look a little bit different than the car you see on the road. They kind of look a little bit space agey and kind of strange. We often get asked if this is a boat is a very common question we get asked when we do events. And it's not, it is a car, but you can see just by a glance that it looks very different than something you'd usually see on the road. And the reason for that is aerodynamics. Our cars are meant to have as little aero drag as possible. And aero drag is just the force that the air exerts on your car as your car is driving along the road. So the faster your car is going, the more drag it has, the more force is pushing back and the lower efficiency you have. And we wanna be able to drive fast, but also very efficiently. So it's super important that the car has a very, very low coefficient of drag. 
And that gives us our very, very low power to drive and helps our car be super efficient. This car has more than a 1,000 kilometer range on a battery that is much, much smaller than a commercial electric vehicle, uh, such as a Tesla or a Polestar or other cars like that have a battery, I think maybe four or five times as large as ours, but they have much less range just simply because they're heavier and they have a much greater aerodynamic drag. An interesting fact that I think one of the other teams published, I think it was Brunel, they put up that basically their car has the same aerodynamic drag as one side view mirror. So if their car had side view mirrors, it would have three times as much drag as it currently does. And that's kind of a wild fact, just the way you can use shapes and geometry to manipulate that air flowing around your car. And it's, it's a lot of fun to work on and do research in. You see, our car does not have side view mirrors. We use cameras. Uh, cameras are a lot smaller and they create a lot less drag than actual mirrors. Uh, so Astrum here is pretty different from a regular family road going car. Everything on it is optimized for efficiency. It's only a one seater. It only has three wheels. And of course, there's an extremely large uh, four meter squared solar array on the top. There's no air conditioning. Uh, the only radio is to speak with the chase vehicle behind. There's no padding on the seat and you're in a, a full five point racing harness. So in the event something were to happen, uh, you, you would be safe. So the top speed of our vehicle is about 130 kilometers an hour, and we can't travel very long at that speed. The power consumption is, is quite enormous, but you know, I think if we were to do so, we could probably go two or three hours um, at that top speed, and then at that point, our battery would be fully drained. Most likely you don't have an electric car, but maybe you do. But yeah, the main difference is that the energy we're using to drive the car forward is come from electricity. In here, we have to be so efficient, we have to drive so far, we need a range of like 1200 kilometres. So we have to get rid of things like air conditioning, uh, gears to change speeds. Can't have that because they add extra weight and they can be a little bit more inefficient. So we have to make sure we decrease any weight possible. And that meant our drivers got a little bit hot, maybe 42 degrees, but we had a lovely bit of airflow flowing through the cabin that kept them nice and cool, maybe for as long as possible. But they're the main differences is that it gets very hot in there, but it's just so uh, inefficient to be able to keep them cool and they just have to um, toughen up a little bit and they did for us, which was really good. Well, there you have it. That's how you build a solar car and drive it from Darwin to Adelaide. And it's an amazing event. There are more than 20 countries represented here and more than 40 teams participate with cars of all shapes and sizes, all trying to do different things, but all using science, technology, engineering and mathematics skills and learning to build these amazing vehicles. If you'd like to know more about the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge, head to education.rios.com. .org.au and you can check out more resources that we've created as part of this event. And remember, you won't know unless you ask.